In acknowledging the country in which Cathedral College Wangaratta stands, our Buri, Kogamulga and Uthu would like to give thanks to Birimi for all that is around us. We would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our totem, Nagoon, for looking over us as we go into each day with truth and service guiding our journey. Dirawara, we acknowledge the bravery of past, present and emerging Aboriginal and Babangarang peoples. Well, hello and welcome to our 2020 information sessions for our year 10, 11 and 12 students, their parents and families. And like a lot of things in 2020, the way we're presenting this information this year is different to years gone by. Normally we'd have everybody in at school together and we'd be presenting this information to you all together in our VCE centre. But unfortunately this year, that can't be the case. So this year we are presenting our information sessions via video and via links on our website. And while this is not ideal, an advantage of it is certainly that it gives you an opportunity to go back, to replay the videos, to have a look at the staff presentations and then to work through the links to present that information to you um, in your own time, which I think is certainly an advantage. But I would really encourage you to follow up this information with staff here at school. So our parents, please get on the phone or the email to follow up with our relevant staff members if there's some further information that you require. And students, I really encourage you to catch up with staff here at school to follow up this information, especially if you require any further information. Gaining as much of this information about your pathways and subject selection is really, really important. There are a lot of very highly experienced staff here that can help guide you in your subject selections and your further pathways. So thank you to all the staff who's been involved in collating and presenting this information via uh, this media, video and online. And I certainly appreciate the work that's gone into it. Welcome to our series of videos aimed at helping students and their families navigate the pathways available in the senior years of, student, of school as they try to navigate life after school. First of all, could I say it's okay at this stage to not know what you would like to do or where you would like to be. This is quite common and the aim of the next few years of your schooling is to research and navigate some of that and undoubtedly things will change. For some of our students, you will decide that you would like to gain employment after school. Some students decide to take a gap year and they defer further study. Other students have arranged for an apprenticeship or would like to take on a traineeship. If you would like to follow any of these options, can I recommend that you listen to our VET and Alternative Pathways video and you book an appointment with Mr Dunbar, our careers coordinator, who will help you, uh, point you in the direction of people that can help you. Can I also recommend that you talk to staff who will help you with your research and with your decision-making process. It does take time and a lot of consideration to consider who you are and where you would like to be. It's also worth watching the careers notice board as a number of local opportunities for apprenticeships or tra traineeships become available. For instance, the local hospital often advertise at the end of the year for positions that they have available. Some people feel that they would benefit from a gap year or time away from school before they um, enter university. If this is the case, can I suggest that you have a clear goal of what you would like to achieve? Gaining some experience in a certain field can be really helpful. If you feel that you would like to gain some independence and maturity during time away, this can also be beneficial. As a number of students in the past have taken the time off to work and think that they will travel, they have found it increasingly hard to find that work and end up washing dishes and feeling that they've wasted their year. So be prepared, get yourselves organised and look into what opportunities are available. 
Cathedral College has a number of places which are available at the end of the year for one year. This will be advertised at the end of term three, but interviews will take place during term four. It is also important to consider how this will be helpful for you before you actually apply for positions. When you're thinking of where you would like to go, it is very helpful to consider where you want to be or where you feel most comfortable. Increasingly, there are a number of local opportunities to study and you can do this from home and online. There's also some great opportunities available in Shepparton, Aubrey and Wodonga um, in a regional context and increasingly students are going to Bendigo, Ballarat. Many students go to Melbourne and uh, a few students go to Wagga Wagga, Adelaide or Brisbane because of the relevance of their courses in these places. After this year, it's obvious that a lot of courses are online, which also allows us greater flexibility in what we're doing. Research all of these options and decide which option suits you the best. With moving to a different place, often people ask questions about financial support. And this is a very individual um, question to answer because each of your circumstances will be different. I therefore recommend that you contact Centrelink directly or research their website and therefore you can see what opportunities are available to you. It will not be the same for everyone. Finally, as you consider your pathway, you will need to, can I recommend that you consider where you would like to live? So if you're considering going to university, please look at the accommodation options at the same time. This can relieve a lot of pressure during year 12 and it means that you're ready, um, you're not leaving things until you're finding out which course you're going and leaving things to the last minute. Even if you're considering employment or traineeship which takes you away, you may wish to consider what accommodation options are available nearby to help you become increasingly independent. independent. I would now like to invite Miss Lee, who will explain the processes of applying for university. Okay, so for those of you who are planning on going to university, it's really important that you start thinking about what courses you would like to study. For students commencing VCE this year, it is just as important as for those of you that are going into year 12, as it will give you an idea of what prerequisites may be required or what subjects could be useful. There are many ways for you to undertake that investigation. As a starting point, Core Search, which is located on the VTAC website, is a really good place to begin. You can also start to investigate open days. However, in the current climate, um, many of these are being run as a virtual open day, which is also, um, uh, many of the details are also available here on our site. For students that are currently in year 10, you've been given a hard copy of the Senior School Curriculum Handbook, which gives you time to read up about the different VCE and VET offerings. On the 10th and 12th of August, you will also have an opportunity to discuss your plans for the future at our Year 11 2021 subject selection interviews. You do not have to, change, to just pick one course when you are undertaking your VTAC selections or just one type of course. And you can also change the order of your preferences along the way. So what is VTAC? VTAC is the Victorian Tertiary Admissions Centre and it is the central point for all of our applications here to Victorian universities, TAFEs and independent tertiary colleges. VTAC is also responsible for uh, calculating your ATAR for Year 12 students and um, all of the applications will open up this year on Monday the 3rd of August. There will be other dates that will be shared with you um, by the school and also on the VTAC website as they become available. 
Going back to course search, so course search is a really valuable resource for you when you are starting to think about the courses that you might like to undertake. You can do a search of any of the different types of pathways that you might be interested in and it will allow you to filter as required. You can look at particular institutions that you might be interested in, particular areas of study or qualification levels that you might be interested in. Again, you can access this via the VTAC website or they also provide a VTAC app, which is available for free. Creating a VTAC account, as I mentioned earlier, will begin on Monday, August the 3rd at 9 a.m. for our current year 12 students. To do this, uh, you will need to create an account using just some simple or answering some simple questions, uh, which will allow you to be given a VTAC ID number and PIN, which you will need to remember for further use when applying for uh, courses. If you're a current year 12 student, you'll need to also have access to your student number so that you can um, provide information to the school later on. The timely applications for this year close on the 30th of September at 5 p.m. and that will cost $41 for the application fee. Late applications will be considered but will incur a much higher fee. When applying for the courses, you will be able to list a possible eight courses. You need to make sure that you establish if you are planning to take a gap year, whether or not the course is able to be deferred. The order of preferences that you list will be considered uh, when your results come out and you are only eligible for one offer per round. So that will work from the top down to the bottom to determine whether you are eligible for a course. You can make adjustments to this list along the way. Uh, you can move the courses, you can delete the courses. Uh, these are set time periods for this, um, otherwise there is additional costs. CES stands for Special Entry Access Scheme and it also opens on the 3rd of August. It closes on the 9th of October. We suggest that you consider your CES applications carefully and early because a number of the categories require additional evidence that sometimes takes time to collect. We suggest that all of our Year 12 students uh, access Category 1 or apply for Category 1 because you would fit the regional area um, criteria. It is as simple as ticking the box for Category 1. The other categories require additional evidence in many cases. If applying under Category 3, please also investigate what supports are available at the university by engaging with the Student Equity and Disability Support Team for the institution. For Category 2, which is financial disadvantage, you will need to provide financial documentation. If you receive Centrelink benefits yourself, you will have a customer reference number that you will need to provide. If your parent or guardian receives Centrelink benefits or the family tax benefit, you will also need to provide documentation to demonstrate that. If you don't receive either of these, but you are experiencing financial disadvantage, you can still apply. You will need to provide a description of the current circumstances as well as an impact statement and a statement of support. All of this information is also available on the VTAC website. For category three and four, you will need to provide an impact statement, which is written by the applicant, and you will also need to provide some statements of support, often written by healthcare practitioners or responsible people uh, who are above the age of 21 and know your, you and your situation well. Without these impact statements or the correct evidence, your application for C's will not be considered. So once again, it is incredibly important that you look at these applications sooner rather than later. Many of our students will also apply for 
uh, scholarships or be looking at the different early entry schemes. Mr Dunbar is always sending out information about these opportunities, particularly the early entry, um, and will continue to do that. If you are looking at scholarships, you can also access those via the VTAC website, but you also can look at the individual institutions because often they will provide uh, applications that are direct applications to their universities. Don't forget also to explore the options for residential scholarships as they can also be very helpful. Finally, how are you accepted into the course? As I said previously, you will set up your uh, preferences. They will look at your preferences and many students will receive an offer in round one, which is normally in December. There will be a second round offer in January, uh, which a lot of students will get access to. Um, in between those two, you are able to rearrange your preferences if you would like to. After that, there are four more rounds of offers, but they may or may not um, provide you with an opportunity to accept an offer that is high in your preference list. It is less and less likely as the rounds go by that you're going to get an offer of one of your highest choices.